But Benedict, in commenting this gospel, notices how it all happens in secret and in silence. It is not a noisy event, and yet it is changing cosmic history. Oftentimes, the important things actually are not noisy as they really happen. The consent of the will, in the case of a person who says yes or no to a person proposing marriage or to the Holy Spirit proposing vocation. Oftentimes they are secret and unseen but their consequences are colossal. But the same also happens in reverse. The withdrawing of the will can be secret and silence and deadly in its consequences. And also, great events in world history can be hidden and unseen in their origins. One notices the power of thought, the power of a writer, Karl Marx, for instance, to change eventually world history. It starts in the head, in the mind, and on the page. So the word has power. And we have all had experiences of being touched by a word on a page, either the sacred page itself or the page of somebody who was inspired by the Holy Ghost. The word, even after a person's death, can live again and have an effect. As can the effect of our words on each other, for good or for bad, a word can go a long way. I remember the power of a sermon when I was in France at the age of 17 at the church of St. Joan of Arc in Rouen. The priest had just been on retreat to La Trappe and he preached for about a quarter of an hour, 20 minutes on the experience and drew lessons from it and it had a huge effect. A sermon has power to change lives. We forget that. Specifically on this day, we are handling also a moment which could be colossal in its consequences. The story of Fatima is well known, but all its details are not. It would seem that there was this part of it which said eventually it would be made, but it would be late, referring to the consecration of Russia. I remember precisely at La Trappe in 1984 being in choir at the High Mass at 11 o'clock in the morning. It was a Sunday that year and the abbot reading the act of consecration in union with the abbots of the order and the bishops of France which united us to the consecration of my now Saint John Paul II. I believe before actually the statue of Fatima which it got brought to St. Peter's Square. And I did remember hearing that the word Russia wasn't in it, but it was referred to indirectly. Particularly ces pays qui ont besoin, those countries in particular who have need of it. That's how we got round it. And he is said to have pronounced it under his breath. The entourage in the mid-80s wouldn't let him pronounce the word Russia because it was the heart of the Cold War and they were a bit nervous. And by the way, that same Pope, not long after his election, when he went to Germany, was talking to the German bishops at Fulda. And they tried to get out of him something about the third secret. He got round it. He did say quite a bit, but it was discreet. Two people took it down in shorthand, a priest and a lady, and they had the exact same version. And it would seem that one motive for not wanting the words of the third secret to be known was that they were a little nervous about the consequences politically 
indicating probably that there was something about what Russia would do and the power it would have, so it could encourage Russia. So that's just a little parenthesis, which would make sense in world history, especially as we see things now unfolding. Heaven is looking down upon earth right now, and heaven is listening to this consecration. It's rather as in the scene that we have in the Gospel today. There's tension in the air. A word is going to go a long way. And indeed, the whole cosmos was waiting in suspense for one syllable in this Gospel. And that is perhaps what is happening today, as the whole world unites itself asking for our Blessed Lady's miraculous intervention. It has to be seen as her own. That this was given to mankind to avert further disaster. The Immaculate Heart of Mary. To return to the Word, it's what Heaven also is asking of us. It's all in the antiphon, which actually we sing often here in the Hermitage. Fiat. And the Archangel Gabriel is on bended knees in courtesy. The courtesy of heaven, which will not force the perfect gentleman which on bended knees asks consent. So it is with our God. The Holy Ghost is the perfect gentleman and will not invade. And we have power to say no to our God. Let us never say no to the Holy Ghost, but be as open as our Blessed Lady. The slightest word, the slightest prompting, for alas, we ourselves are our own worst enemy. On this day we kneel at the words et incarnatus est, but we will take the old creed.